Hey everyone, welcome back to Footy Leagues Around the World, it is your host Ryan. There was a time in my life where I was obsessed with the video game FIFA. For me, the specific game was FIFA 12, and I played it religiously in the early 2010s. Not only did the game teach me about several leagues around the world that I had never heard of before, but it taught me about new teams as well. Specifically, in the rest of the world category, there were the Orlando Pirates and the Kaiser Chiefs. I knew nothing about South African soccer at the time, but I loved the names and the logos of each of these teams. In today's episode, we will be learning more about these two clubs, the league they play in, and what domestic soccer, as it's called there, is like in the country they call the Rainbow Nation. Today, we're learning all about South Africa. Footy leagues around the world. Footy leagues, heck yeah. If you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Footy Leagues content. We've now surpassed 2,700 subscribers, which is awesome. And the episode requests continue to roll in, so thank you all so much for the continued support and interest. South Africa, officially called the Republic of South Africa, is the southernmost country in Africa. It is bordered by 1,739 miles of coastline to the south, which stretches along the South Atlantic and Indian Oceans, and is also bordered by Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique to the north. The country also has two other countries within its borders, Lesotho and Eswatini. Its population is just under 60 million, according to the World Bank. It has 12 official languages, including Afrikaans and English. It has three capitals, Pretoria, Cape Town, and Bloemfontein, and its largest city is Johannesburg. There are five tiers to the South African soccer pyramid. At the top is the South African Premiership, officially known as the Betway Premiership for sponsorship reasons. Betway is the league's new sponsor as of 2024, signing one of the biggest sponsorship deals in South African soccer history, worth 900 million South African rand over three years. As of the 2024-25 season, the league is made up of 16 teams that play a 30-game season. This season will last from September to May. At the end of the season, the top two teams qualify for the 2025-26 CAF Champions League. The teams that finish in third and fourth place qualify for the CAF Confederation Cup, Africa's equivalent of the Europa League. The team at the bottom of the table at the end of the regular season is automatically relegated to the National First Division, while the second to last team enters a three-team promotion playoff between themselves and the teams that finish second and third in the National First Division. In this playoff, each team plays the others twice before the top team is promoted, or stays in the Premiership. The other two teams are relegated or stay in the National First Division. The team with the most Premiership titles is also the current champion, Mamalodi Sundowns FC. They've won the league 14 times, including the last seven years in a row. In second place, tied with four titles each, are Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs. According to the most recent CAF rankings, South Africa's top flight is considered the fourth best top flight in Africa, behind Egypt, Morocco, and Algeria. Mamelodi Sundowns are ranked by CAF as the fourth best football team in Africa, behind Egypt's Al Ali, Tunisia's ES Tunis, and Morocco's Wydad. All teams in the Premiership are fully professional. Second on the pyramid is the National First Division, also known as the Motsepe Foundation Championship for sponsorship reasons. The 2024-25 edition of the tournament will last from August to June with 16 teams playing 30 games each. At the end of the season, the top team is automatically promoted to the Premiership, while the teams in second and third place enter the promotion playoff that I described earlier. The bottom two teams are relegated to the SAFA Second Division. Teams in the National First Division are a mix of fully professional and semi-professional clubs. These first two levels of soccer in South Africa, plus a few of the country's cup competitions, which we will talk about later, are organized by the Premier Soccer League. This is not actually a league, but instead an administrative organizing body affiliated with the South African Football Association. Not only does the PSL organize these various competitions, but it is also involved in the sale of team licenses, which I think is fairly unique to South African soccer. Unlike most association football leagues around the world, licenses to participate in the PSL, or the top two tiers of South African soccer, can be bought and sold on the free market. 
This goes beyond just people and companies buying and selling teams. That exists everywhere. This system literally allows teams to sell their license to participate in a certain league. Let's say, for example, that the Orlando Pirates get bought tomorrow and the new owner decides to dissolve the club and sell their premiership license. This would allow a new owner to come in, create a brand new team from scratch, and have them start their life as a club at the top of the South African soccer pyramid, instead of beginning at the bottom of the pyramid, like most countries around the world. Since 1998, approximately 33 club licenses have been sold, including 10 since 2020, and 3 in 2024 alone. While a number of these sales have come as a result of financial issues, I can't help but wonder what kind of damage this system is doing to the domestic game in South Africa. Specifically, the fact that teams can just buy their way into the professional game. To me, it just seems like a bad system that should be changed, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Back to South Africa's league system. Third on the country's soccer pyramid is the SAFA Second Division, also known as the ABC Motsepi League for sponsorship reasons. This competition is split into nine divisions, or one for each province in the country. These divisions range in size, but most of them have between 16 and 20 teams. After teams play a set number of games, usually playing their division mates just once, the nine winning teams from each regional division enter a playoff stage. In the playoffs, teams are split into three groups of three and play their group mates in a set number of games until a group winner is determined. The top second place team from each playoff group also moves on to a single game semifinal. These teams, along with the top second place team from each playoff group, moves on to a single game semifinal. After these two games are played, a single game final is held to determine a league winner. No matter who wins this final, both teams are automatically promoted to the national first division. The bottom two teams from each division are relegated. This is the first level of soccer in South Africa that is organized by the South African Football Association, hence the acronym SAFA. Most clubs at this level are semi-professional. Fourth on the pyramid is the SAFA Regional League, also known as the Hollywood Bets Regional League for sponsorship reasons. This is a league split into provincial divisions like the SAFA Second Division, plus each of the nine divisions have additional subdivisions within them. There are 52 subdivisions in total across all nine provinces, and approximately 832 clubs in total. At this level, nearly all teams are amateur. Teams in each subdivision play a set number of games until a winner is determined. That regional league winner advances into a series of playoffs in their province. Eventually, the top two teams in each province earn promotion to the SAFA Second Division. It is unclear if there is relegation from this level of football. At the bottom of the pyramid are local football association leagues. This level of soccer is organized by SAFA's local football associations. The number of teams and leagues at this level can vary greatly depending on area and population. Because of this, season lengths vary, and it is unknown if there is promotion to the fourth tier from these leagues. But I can tell you that teams at this level are almost always amateur. Besides its men's pyramid, South Africa also has a three-tier women's soccer pyramid. At the top is the SAFA Women's League, also known as the Hollywood Bets Super League for sponsorship reasons. Over a season that lasts from March to November, 16 teams play 30 games before a champion is crowned. The top two teams at the end of the season qualify for the COSAFA Women's Champions League, a qualifying tournament between teams in eight countries in Southern Africa. This tournament is used as a qualifying tournament for the CAF Women's Champions League, the top continental club competition in Africa. The most successful team in Super League history has been Mamelodi Sundown's Ladies, who have six titles, including the most recent one. At the end of the Super League season, the bottom two teams are relegated to the Sassol Women's League, which is on the second tier of the women's soccer pyramid. In this tournament, 144 teams are split into nine provincial leagues. Those leagues are split into two groups. Teams play the others in their group twice before the top team in each group advance to a provisional playoff. The winner of this playoff moves on to the Sassel League National Championship. Here, nine teams are divided into three groups of three. Each team plays the others in their group once before the top team in each group, plus the top second place team based on points and goal differential, enter a single game knockout stage to eventually determine a league winner. 
Despite who wins the championship, both teams that make it to the final earn promotion to the Super League. The bottom two teams in each provincial league are relegated to the bottom of the Women's Pyramid, which is called the Safa Women's Regional League. In this amateur league, hundreds of teams compete across 52 regional leagues, representing all nine South African provinces. Each regional champion competes in a provincial Safa Regional Championship. The top two teams of each regional championship are then promoted to their provincial leagues in the second tier of the pyramid. Besides its leagues, there are also three cup competitions in South Africa. The first is the NetBank Cup, South Africa's premier knockout competition, whose format is inspired by the English FA Cup. The current format sees all 16 premiership clubs, eight national first division teams, and eight teams from the amateur ranks of South African soccer enter into a main draw of 32 teams. The premiership teams enter the main draw automatically, while the national first division clubs need to play a single qualifier against other national first division clubs. The amateur teams also go through a series of qualifiers to enter into the main draw. Again, very much like the English FA Cup. From here, matchups are randomly assigned and a single game is played. If teams are tied after 90 minutes and after 30 minutes of extra time, penalties follow. The eventual winner of the cup receives a prize of 7 million South African Rand as of 2024. The winner also qualifies for the next season's CAF Confederation Cup. The team with the most net bank cups has been Kaiser Chiefs with 13 titles, while Orlando Pirates won the most recent cup, their 10th. There is also the Carling Knockout Cup, a tournament between all 16 teams in the Premiership. Relaunched in 2023 after a three-year hiatus, the tournament is played single elimination until a winner is crowned. After this competition and the Premiership season ends, the winner plays against a best 11 side voted on by the fans. This all-star team must consist of six players from the Premiership and six players from the National First Division. Kaiser Chiefs, again, have won the most titles with 13. Finally, there is the MTN 8, a cup competition between the top eight teams from the Premiership from the year before. In the first round, the first place team plays the eighth place team, the second place team plays the seventh place team, etc. The first round is single elimination, while the remaining rounds are played over two legs. The winner receives a 10 million South African Rand cash prize. The most successful team in competition history is, you guessed it, Kaiser Chiefs, who have 15 cup wins. There have been several other cup competitions throughout the years, but all have since been defunct. Ahead of the 2010 World Cup, which was hosted by South Africa, five new soccer stadiums were built in the country while five existing stadiums received upgrades. These new stadiums continue to be used by Premiership clubs to this day, though few have reached capacity for league games. The largest stadium in the country is FNB Stadium in Johannesburg, also known as Soccer City. This 94,736-seat stadium received an expansion for the World Cup and hosted the tournament's final. It is also the permanent home of Kaiser Chiefs. Other notable stadiums that host Premiership teams include the 58,310 capacity Cape Town Stadium, home to Cape Town City FC, the 55,500 capacity Moses Mabhita Stadium in Durban, home to Amazulu FC, and the 46,000 capacity Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium in this place, formerly known as Port Elizabeth. By the way, that Q is pronounced with a click, so I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. This stadium is home to Chippa United. Likely the biggest and most well-known derby in South Africa is the Soweto Derby between Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates. Since the teams started facing each other in 1970, Kaiser Chiefs have a slight advantage in the tie, having won 28 games versus 25 for Orlando Pirates. Other rivalries include those between teams from the same city or region, like the Cape Town Derby between Cape Town City and Cape Town Spurs, the Chuwane Derby between Mamalodi Sundowns and Super Sport United, and the Durban Derby between Amazulu and Golden Arrows. Soccer first arrived in South Africa through colonialism in the late 19th century, as the game was popular among British soldiers. From the earliest days of the sport in South Africa until the end of apartheid, organized soccer was affected by the country's system of racial segregation. 
The All-White Football Association of South Africa was formed in 1892, while the South African Indian Football Association, the South African Bantu Football Association, and the South African Colored Football Association were formed in 1903, 1933, and 1936 respectively. In 1906, an all-white South African soccer team traveled to South America to play a series of friendly matches, in which they won 11 of the 12 matches played and scored 60 goals with only 7 conceded. In 1953, South Africa was one of only four African nations to attend FIFA's Congress that year, at which they demanded and won representation on the FIFA Executive Committee. The three other nations were Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan. In 1956, those four nations founded the Confederation of African Football, or CAF as we know it today. Ahead of the 1957 African Cup of Nations, it became clear that South Africa's constitution prohibited racially mixed teams from competitive sport, which meant they could only send either an all-black side or an all-white side to the tournament. These parameters were unacceptable by the other members of the confederation, and South Africa was disqualified from the competition. However, some sources say that they withdrew voluntarily. At the second CAF conference in 1958, South Africa were formally expelled from the Confederation. However, that same year, an all-white football association of South Africa was admitted into FIFA, with the ultimatum of falling in line with FIFA's non-discriminatory regulations by 1960. Of course, that didn't happen, and in 1961, South Africa was formally expelled from FIFA. That suspension was temporarily lifted in 1963, but imposed again in 1964. The first professional football league was formed in South Africa in 1959, called the National Football League. It was made up of 12 all-white teams from the Transvaal province and the city of Durban. Promotion from various state leagues was introduced in 1962, and the league grew to other cities in the early 60s. A proper second division was introduced in 1969. The league merged with the all-black National Professional Soccer League in 1978. While this was considered a non-racial league, teams were still divided by race and white teams could only have a maximum of three black players on their squad. The NPSL was split in 1985, with several teams going off to start their own league, which became the National Soccer League. This league lasted until 1995 when an agreement was reached between the National Soccer League and the remnants of the National Professional Soccer League to form what is now known today as the South African Premiership. Between 1961 and 1992, a year after apartheid ended, South African clubs and its national team did not participate in international competitions, including the FIFA World Cup. Once apartheid ended, a new non-racial South African Football Association was formed and was admitted into FIFA. On July 7, 1992, the South African national team played their first game in two decades, beating Cameroon 1-0. South Africa qualified for the 1998 and 2002 World Cups, but failed to progress past the group stage both times. They hosted and won the 1996 African Cup of Nations, and hosted the 2010 World Cup, the first African nation to do so. Two South African clubs have won the CAF Champions League, Orlando Pirates in 1995 and Mamelodi Sundowns in 2016. Both teams have also finished runners-up in the competition, along with Kaiser Chiefs in 2021. A South African team has never won the CAF Confederation Cup. In 2023, Mamelodi Sundowns won the first African Football League, which was originally launched as the African Super League. They are the only South African team currently participating. According to page 63 of the Premier Soccer League Handbook, Teams in the South African Premiership are only allowed to register five foreign players on their roster. In the National First Division, this number is three for a starting lineup. Teams in the National First Division are also required to have a minimum of five South African players under the age of 23 on their rosters and have a minimum of two under 23 players on the field during any match. According to Transfer Market, there are 79 foreign players currently registered in the Premiership, making up 14.7% of all players in the league. A vast majority of foreign players in South Africa's top flight come from African countries, 24 of them as a matter of fact. They include Namibia, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, Zambia, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Uganda, Angola, 
Lesotho, Kenya, Tanzania, Malawi, Cameroon, Ghana, Mozambique, Liberia, Mali, Eswatini, Botswana, Rwanda, Chad, Ethiopia, Guinea, and Equatorial Guinea. There are also South Americans from countries like Brazil, Chile, Uruguay, and Venezuela, and the occasional European from France, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and the Czech Republic. There is also a guy from New Zealand, but no Brits. While there are some very talented South African soccer players out there, very few of those called up to the national team play outside of the country. Those that do can be found in the United States, Portugal, France, England, the Netherlands, Romania, Cyprus, Tunisia, and Egypt. The player with the most appearances for the national team was Aaron McQuena, a center back and defensive midfielder who was capped 107 times for his country between 1999 and 2010. The country's leading goal scorer is Benny McCarthy, who netted 31 goals in 81 games for South Africa between 1997 and 2012. The top scorer in Premiership history is Siabonga Nomvithi, who collected 123 goals over his two-decade career, which ended in 2020. For those who can't go to games, all South African Premiership matches, as well as select national First Division games and Cup games, are broadcasted on Supersport. South Africa's premier sports channel. Games are also broadcasted locally on the streaming service DSTV Now. For those outside of the country, DSTV Now and Supersport are available across the African continent. For the rest of us, it appears that we are out of luck. Unless you're using a VPN, South African Premiership matches don't seem to be available to stream in North America and elsewhere, and highlights on YouTube are few and far between. If you search specific matches, you can find highlights on YouTube from various sources, but the league doesn't appear to have a dedicated channel that regularly uploads highlights of every game from every team. If you happen to know where to find highlights or streams of the South African Premiership, you know what to do. Leave a comment or a link below. Well, that's it for South Africa. Thanks for watching and exploring another country with me. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell if you want to stay updated on all of our latest videos. Until next time, happy footy watching.